So we're here at the CS 2019, and who are you? Hi, my name is Jeanette Wilson. I work for Microchip Technologies. Welcome to the 2019 CES. Let me show you our, our booth. So you have of lots demos. of demos on here? We do, we have a lot of demos on here. Microchip is a semiconductor company, and we really focus on effortless design for our customers um, in the areas of smart, connected, secure. So what we're showing here is a wireless network. So my Y is a Wi-Fi technology from Microchip. We also have LoRa, which stands for long range. If you need to communicate over um, a longer range, you know, 10 kilometers, for example, you can do that wirelessly. And then through Wi-Fi. Um, when you actually take a look at this demo, we're me measuring the temperature in different areas of our booth. And I don't know how this will show up on your screen, but you can see the different hot spots and where we're located and the, the temperature that's being monitored. Nice. Over here is an example of a device using our PIC 24F uh, J64 GA702. Now what this is, is this is an end application. It's one of our customer's designs right here. This is a 16-bit microcontroller, and it's really being used to monitor the overall health of animals in the industry. So this will be um, very important for dairy cows when they're looking at the production of milk. You can think of it as a factory, and so this technology helps them to be able to maintain and monitor the health of the, of the animal. Nice. Um, over here, I'm just going to hit these very quickly, but we have a lot of sensors in here that if you're looking for precision control in your industri industry um, factories or anything like that, um, we're able to very, very um, tightly um, monitor it's, these. Just like a weight measuring system right here? Yeah, so it's got a scale on it right here, um, so you can see this. It's also going to do some, some different um, cycling here. And what we do is we do a lot of different designs too. You can see we have a lot of different microchip devices here, and so we try to package them together very easily for our customers to be able to use these. What is this? Um, this is a gigabit Ethernet network redundancy, yeah. and what's nice about this is when you have a ring network, um, some things, sometimes things go wrong in the factory, right? Maybe you lose control or things like that. Let's just say something happens and, and something gets broken. I can pull it out. Yeah. And if you see over here, it recognized that it broke, and so it's going to now try to self-heal the ring using this ring technology. So, so it's kind of like a meshing, a rewriting. It's not a mesh; it's actually a ring technology that we're using for this. Yes. Nice. So um, very similar in terms of the Ethernet here. Yeah. Um, over here, what we're showing is Amazon uh, Free RTOS. So our, a lot of our customers are very interested in how do you connect to a cloud. And as a semiconductor vendor, we are cloud agnostic, but we have a lot of examples. It looks like this one's being very um, we'll come right interesting right here. now. So let me show you this one. Now, this one is based upon a CEC1702. This is an ARM M4 core with hardware cryptography in it. And with hardware cryptography in it, what it means is that when you're doing hardware algorithms, for example, a SHA, to do it in software will take you about 186 microseconds versus doing it in hardware is 33 microseconds or five times difference. When you start to do encryption and decryption of your data, you can start to see the scales. Because it's a general purpose microcontroller, there's a lot of things we can do, but a lot of our customers will use this to do secure flash updates and make sure that you've got um, updates that are good and then secure boot. We can also do keypads um, because we have a lot of I.O. on this device, so we can actually use this to control different things with a keypad. So you can see some of the different things there. What is this, uh, this single board computer here? So this is a single board computer from you know Conga Tech. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. W so where is your is, solution here? So um, our solution is the MEC1705. This is also an ARM-based product. Um, these will be used in conjunction with Intel architecture, and Intel's in a, a transition from one bus to a new bus called eSpy, and we're one of the first manufacturers to have that eSpy capability, and as such, our customers has use this, and then it also has the capability to do secure boot, so if you're worried about um, rootkit types of issues, like the Stuxnet virus or things like that, it will then... Did you um, say eSpy? Yes. 
So, and this bus solution means, what does it mean, the multi-bus? Or is it, what, I see two chips here. Right, these are actually the Intel chips right here. Um, our two. Chip, yes, so our chip should be this one right here. I'm yeah. struggling to look yeah. at it right there, so. Yeah. Um, and so what, it, what it's really doing is um, that as the process nodes shrink, down below 10 nanometers, physics change. And so you can't always support like a five volt bus. And so you've had to go down to a 3.3 volt bus or even lower bus technologies. And so what Intel and AMD have yeah. on their architecture has done is, is they started tra to transition to those buses. Nice, and this is with the, the one with the Amazon free why does it say yes. Amazon Free Artos? What does Amazon have to do with the Free Artos? Well, so Amazon Free Artos actually is um, a development kernel, so you can actually see this based upon the Free Artos kernel. And so the nice thing about it is it's very small and very light. Oh, it's yeah. very small and very lightweight, and so it's very um, easy to use with like the Amazon um, AWS, Amazon Web Services. So what this demonstration is showing is a development board using our Wi-Fi technology and a temperature sensor, and it's con taking data and it's connecting up through the AWS cloud and coming back down here through the gateway and being controlled. And so this, what's being shown there is controlling this and you can actually monitor the different temperature, humidities, and things like that. So that's what we're doing is tracking that. And these two devices are actually um, talking to each other. And you have yeah. chips in there. We have lots you of chips in here. So this is a PIC 32 MZ. We also have our wireless chips on here as well. We also have some other microchip components on here. So there's a significant amount of microchip content on here. Right. Over here we've got some very unique devices. Um, these little devices here are the ECC 608 family of devices, which is fantastic for doing authentication yeah. um, and to really secure your system and, and who you're speaking with. In addition to this, we've got um, the microchip processors that are on here as well, 32-bit microprocessors on here. So we have all of that here. Nice. Yeah. All right, and you have more and more demos around? I, I do. Let me show you actually yeah. some of these. Is this an uh, ARM solution? This one, yes. Yeah, so these are ARM yeah. solutions. Now, these are the SAM, 10, SAM L10, SAM L11 devices, which has the trust zone in it. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to have a portion of the um, code that can really be protected in a customer environment, in, in a development so cycle. So it's not using the new core, ARM Cortex M23 or 33, but it's uh, as a, a, a microcontroller with the trust zone built in, maybe? It is, and yeah. it is... Um, yeah, no problem. And uh, you also showing some right here. Yeah, so this yeah. is actually showing water tolerant touch demo. So the thing about touch is a lot of times it's very difficult to actually have water because water is a conductor. But you know, it's, even now you can see my buttons are changing even though it's wet. So it still knows what's going on even though it's maybe in a harsh environment. That might be also part of the firmware, how you have algorithms that can figure that out and stuff. It is, it is absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And uh, over here? And this is the SAM L11. So this is showing an ultra low power um, device right here. Um, now this is also doing secure lower, the, the long range capabilities. So here's, some, this is an ARM chipset also? This is an ARM, right. Chipset ARM Trust Zone with the immutable secure boot. And it also has some um, hardware cryptography accelerators and a true random number generator in here. All right. And uh, this is uh, very important for the future of the IoT also and the LoRa and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And you can see, you know, we were actually a 2018 winner for the SAM L11 Best Contribution to IoT Security. And that was from ARM TechCon. So, you know, we're very proud of that award. Nice. Big partner with the ARM, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have more and more demos around? Yeah, so here's more touch demos. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you have different touch demos, again, um, I don't know if I can turn this one on. You know, sometimes in a harsh in, um, environment, like a factory environment, you may have gloves on to help protect the users, but sometimes you still need to be able to handle different things, and so you want to be able to touch different things, even though I don't have, nice. you know, it's the ability to Right. It? No, it's not it's conducting. Plastic glove? Yeah, the, just a plastic glove. Here, you can nice. touch it, feel it. And somehow it goes through. Right, with, with the yeah. touch capability that we have. In addition to that, and I think that this is really neat too. Um, again, this is another um, customer of ours that's using our haptics technology. One of the benefits of touch technology is that it's quiet, you know, but 
a lot of people say, well, I don't know if it's working. I, I can't tell if it's working. So these are really nice because they actually give you vibration. And unfortunately for the viewers on the camera, nice. you can't tell. But when I touch it, it actually vibrates. It's like a... Um, do you feel the vibration yeah. when you touch it? It's nice. So what and do you do about that? And you hear it? Do you hear the... I can hear it. I can feel it. Right. So what do you do about that? Well, and that's part of the haptics technology that we've incorporated into our solutions. And so what it does is it gives the users the ability to actually feel and sense these technologies that um, are associated with this. Nice. And this is a maybe potentially could also be printer electronics and stuff. Or like it looks, um, it could be like in a, I don't know, in a shower or something. Absolutely. It could, it's maybe waterproof. Maybe. But then here you have some other. Yeah, this is yeah. also another waterproof technology similar to what we've shown you before. So again, you know, you can do different things, and this is just showing that yeah. even when I touch it, I can still work. Nice. So, yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. So maybe we can walk around a little bit yes. more? Um, and actually, I think that Brian will um, actually be sending you, and we're going to have a different person for you to show you our fan fascinating automotive solutions. Nice. OK. So okay. let's go there. OK. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As soon as I'm Thanks. done, I'll be able to. We'll go around right here. All right. This is Johan Stelzer. Yeah. He's actually from Europe, so you might have yeah. met him at. Uh, Hi. Hello, I'm Johan. Nice Hi, so to meet you. So who are you? Okay. Uh, Johan, you said, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what are you going to show here? Uh, yes, I'm Johan. I'm pr marketing for the Automotive Product Group at Microchip, and I walk you through basically the uh, the demos that we have so here. Microchip is in a lot of automotive solutions. Microchip is in many automotive solutions. We, uh, I would say, countless. Basically, uh, we are one of the lead suppliers, basically, for touch applications, touch solutions in automotive. And what you see here is an example of uh, touch buttons on a on a steering wheel. Uh, with uh, with feedback, uh, depending on customer requirements. Is it haptic? It's haptic feedback. Yeah. Nice. Looks nice. So yeah. you can feel you've touched it. You touch it, and you get you, you get some uh, let's say feedback that you actually get uh, in all the functions. It's bottom. not localized haptics, right? Is the whole unit moving, or is it local? It's localized. It's on your finger. On on the finger. Yeah. If you touch nice. next to it, it doesn't actually move. Yeah? How does so that work? It uses piezo piezo. Uh, uh, let's say. Uh, feedback, yeah, and uh, and on top of that, it's a it's a surface. It surface is actually, you know, you can you can program it, and, uh, you know, to show, show more functions or use the functions depending on the user. Nice. So that's what we call uh, one touch, uh, uh, you know, one dimensional uh, touch. Then we have here a three dimensional touch, which is basically guesting. Gesture, gesture recognition. You see here, we are, I'm entering with my with a hand into the, uh, let's say, electric field, and you can see it follows basically my finger. Uh, you can see that it shows the four. So actually, the, the, the five, uh, the five uh, the antennas and the, the, the field of strength. How does that work? We, we basically create. We have antennas here. We create uh, a capacity field. And when I disturb the field, it actually shows the disturbance. Yeah. And is this accurate enough? It could be in a car. It's in a car. It can be in a car. Yes. It can be. In, it can be in cars. What? The, a similar. Well, a different technology is used today, which is, is camera-based and which is and infrared based which is a lot more expensive. So that is. A, but it's more accurate to do it like this with the capacity field. Yes. It's more it's accurate, the, and it's basically it's uh, the stick. It's it's a stick. It focuses on the gravity, on the center of gravity of my of the object that gets into the field. How big is the area you can support here? Here, it's just around here. Basically, it's uh, you know the area is within the within the feet. It's created by the antenna, yeah. So depending on what size of antenna you use it. But uh, from it is 15 centimeters. From 15 here. To 20 centimeters. Yeah. From this distance around. Right. That's really cool. Uh, the third uh, technology that we show here is, is a touch display, and we show here the first time basically uh, knobs on display. So basically, it's a mechanical knob. And it has one connection to, to, the, to, the, to the to the display, which is this. This is the only electrical connection it has. 
this is one of the demos uh, that we and it allows so, us uh, well, basically you know, to give uh, uh, like a, like it treats like a mechanical wheel but it's actually connected to the capacitive display and it feel it gets it's got like a nice mechanical feeling to it nice mechanical feeling these two together you can you can change uh, and then no, these two together things. are representative of the interior can be can be different so this is the uh, same it can be just uh, like we're generating nice. pan uh, Like for example, like your, your HVAC system. You know, now they are unsynchronized. You can synchronize them. Uh, you can actually have you know, different different uh, different uh, menus on the. On just the, one big tablet. It's one big tablet. You screw them on. Put, put them on. Put them on. Uh, put on top of the tablet. Basically. Put it on top of the tablet. You can even potentially take them off. You can make anything happen. No, you, yeah. Once it's on, it's, you cannot take it off. It's, it basically stays there. But you could have different options. Yeah, you can have a, let's say, a low-end version without that uh, mechanical yeah. wheel, uh, using the same display, and you can add that display on add that wheel in a, in a higher level. Yeah. Uh, so basically, these are the. This is the. Let's say, in general, the touch area. <laughs> One-dimensional, three-dimensional, two-dimensional touch. Uh, and here we show an evaluation kit uh, to continue that. In the corner where we have uh, uh, customers right now, we show basically security technology. We, we, you know, we show it on a CAN network where basically messages are protected, secured. Um, you know, they, they, we use uh, an authentication to uh, allow only messages that come with the right key uh, and communicate with the right key between the nodes. This is a big challenge to keep all these cars uh, safe from Abs hackers, right? Absolutely, that's what, the, what we show basically over here. Maybe yeah, we can we, come back right there after. Come back Maybe, after yeah. and, and here? Here is, uh, we show uh, inductive sensing. Inductive sensing. Uh, an example of uh, of an uh, application is shown here. You see our our IC, the inductive One sensor IC. You see basically a linear, uh, let's say, sensor here um, that that creates a field uh, to, to sense the position. Position of the coin. No, the, the, the no. coin is, uh, is, is you know, just a relative for the size. Yeah? So basically, we have, a programming we, have, uh, we have the sensor in here. We have the chip. You know, just, yeah. uh, right there, and we have uh, you know, the communication interface, which could be, for example, PSI 5 communication or PWM communication to uh, a main unit. Yes. This is uh, why is this needed today? Is, uh, you know, we are, have already hall sensors, yeah? But this is a lot more robust uh, than hall sensors. Uh, and then when you look at uh, what, what's, what's happening is you have more electrical cars, uh, electric cars create more, you know, stress, more, more, uh, let's say, emissions. Um, and with the, with this technology, the inductive sensor technology, you can filter on the better on the signal and work, uh, you know, robustly in this this uh, environment. Nice. Um, what we what we have here is. Uh, it's a MEMS technology, it's laser, laser technology, and uh, basically it's a MEMS mirror, and in the microchip, uh, let's say, solution is driving the MEMS mirror with, uh, uh, with, with MOSFET drivers and providing the intelligence, you know, to control the MEMS mirror. This is to do the heads-up display? It's heads-up display, applications heads-up display, uh, but also, um, Lighting, yeah. So, so uh, RGB lighting. Yeah. Uh, what we show here is this a technology called Isolet. Uh, it's it's basically uh, a low cost uh, solution for interior lighting. Uh, what Microchip provides is we are uh, we provide the microcontroller with an Isolet firmware to drive the LEDs. Um, it's a it's the master. Uh, should be here. What is IC LED? IC LED stands for Integrated Smart Embedded LED. It's a it's a it's a technology that was uh, invented by Innova and uh, BMW. 
And, and what's it for? It's for interior lighting, you know, for any, like for example, uh, having back, uh, background lighting to your, to your knobs that you just saw over there. Could be done by by you know this technology, they or can if you choose the color inside the car, you can choose the color inside the car out of uh, 4,096 different uh, different colors. Right? Uh, what this we show networking for cars, right? This is ne yeah networking for cars for interior lighting. Uh, this is networking. Uh, Classical networking can networking. Uh, so with that. What, how, you're doing mesh with it or no? What we show is is can partial networking. You know, we have a, we have a network where in a normal car, not every every node is active at the same time. You know, some some functions are dormant while you're driving. Some functions are active. Uh, the, this this technology that we're showing here is called can partial networking and allows you to wake up nodes on demand when you need them. And what it does to the, to the user is, uh, let's say, uh, reducing the power consumption of the overall vehicle. So at the end of the day, you're actually saving energy. Yeah? So and that boils down at the end of the day to saving energy on your fuel emission, yeah? on, your, on your fuel consumption. Uh, Can we jump in there? Here we show yeah. our car access. Video. Car access. It's it's basically uh, it's it's basically a remote keyless entry. It's passive entry, passive go. Taps system. And the system that we have set up here is basically you activate the system with the capacitive sensing technology here on the on the door handle. Now your system wakes up, wakes up from dormant, from sleep mode, in active mode. Uh, you basically communicate with, with your key and your key fob and, and the onboard unit, yeah. uh, and uh, you can, you, you, without removing basically your key from from your from your from your from your, uh, from your jacket or from your from your suitcase, yeah. uh, you can you can enter the car, you can start the engine, press uh, the start button, and you you start your car. What Microchip has is uh, one of the challenges here is. Basically, uh, uh, that someone on the, the, you know the, the challenge with PEP systems is uh, someone could actually uh, let's say read your your key while you're while you're actually let's say in the restaurant or at home and and use a router uh, to actually open up the car that oh. is distant from your from your from your key. And you have a solution to make that yeah, We have a, a solution now. for that, yeah. Nice. yeah. That's a big deal. You don't want people to steal your Tesla. Ab right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one. This is wireless, wireless charging. Wireless, uh, yeah. charging. Nice. Uh, so, what Microchip has is, uh, is a number of, uh, let's say, products that go into the wireless... Uh, so the Qi, Qi wireless charger Qi. and high power, very high power wireless charging. We, Yes, for automotive, uh, it wouldn't be 100 watt. For automotive, basically, we're targeting 15 watt. That's what, what basically uh, the, the, the phone maker, the, the, the uh, smartphone makers would accept. Uh, our system is, uh, again, is, is flexible to be able to adopt the various profiles of uh, the different, uh, let's say, mobile uh, and smartphone makers, uh, whether it's Samsung or, or Apple or, or UI, uh, can, be, can be adopted to their requirement. Nice. What is this? Uh, this one is USB power delivery. So this one, this, over there we saw the wireless charging, here we see the wire charging, basically, nice. yeah, wire U USB interface. And what we show here are the different types of charging profiles that you can, that we can support with our, with our product. Yeah. Uh, another power delivery? This is another element of uh, basically power delivery, USB charging, but also uh, flex connect or uh, home reversal. So, for example, this, this solution supports CarPlay and CarLive, where basically your phone takes over control of, your, uh, of the navigation system or the head unit. So when if you probably know about this when you when you plug into when you plug into the uh, uh, you know the USB port with your iPhone uh, and you go into CarPlay mode, basically on the display on the head unit in the car you see basically a, a, a mirror of your of your cell phone of your smartphone. All the applications are available now. So it's display port. 
the yes. display port output to the display. Yes. Yeah. So you do the chipset that does power delivery and display port. Right. Power. So. Exactly. Yeah. So. The, this one does both data and and uh, and charging. This one is charging only. Yeah? So this, uh, what we show here is a secure Ethernet uh, application. And I mentioned earlier over there that security is a key point for uh, any networking system or any network in the car. So what this solution shows is an Ethernet network uh, with, with different nodes uh, and uh, paired with our security. I see, uh, you know, provides uh, a robust, secure solution. Uh, we we not just rely on software TLS, but also do hardware TLS here. Uh, what is Coke's Express? Coke oh, oh, Express is a uh, is a standard that is being used in the in, in industrial application today. Uh, microchip has been in this market for the last ten years uh, as a key supplier of this technology in industrial applications. Now we are making this solution ready for automotive applications. So that means automotive qualification, uh, but we also provide uh, solutions uh, with automotive standards like MIPI CSI2 interface to camera ICs and back to you know, the, uh, the main unit. So that gives uh, customers multi gigabit, in this case 10 gigabit, uh, you know, power, 10 gigabit uh, speed. Uh, in a small cable? In, this, in a coax cable. Yeah? So this is All a, over the car. A 15 meter coax cable with, uh, you know, these are inserts, you know, basically with, you can have four, uh, uh, in, in, uh, let's say, four inserts uh, in a 15 meter cable. Up to 12.5 gigabits per second. That's correct. Yeah? That's the industrial uh, speed for automotive. Uh, the speed is uh, right now 10 gigabits per second. Mm. Uh, what we show here is uh, an ionic method. So it's a uh, technology that is uh, that combines basically synchronous network and Ethernet. Uh, this particular demo here shows a, an Ethernet uh, network con connected to uh, the ionic net. Uh, on the same bus, we have uh, we have streaming data, we have audio video data, uh, but also we have packet data, we have Ethernet. Uh, Data. So anything that comes from uh, from the Ethernet uh, can go seamlessly, basically into those nodes. We could be for could be, for example, head unit or an amplifier uh, or or a telematic unit. Because all these cars have more and more networking going on. Right. There's more and, and more network jumps to new cars have much more faster network. Well, they actually have. Uh, no, Many of the cars have by P based uh, you know, uh, uh, networks, uh, Ethernet, automotive Ethernet. Yeah. But for some applications, Heineken is a much more cost efficient solution uh, because it actually can, can work with native data, uh, streaming data, especially for audio and video applic applications. Nice. So we show a variant of this Heineken here, which is. With uh, voice? With voice recognition and uh, with uh, with microphones, those microphones, uh, for example, could be used uh, for uh, emergency calls, of course, uh, but also for uh, noise uh, noise cancellation within the car. Um, uh, and again, real time uh, speed is is, is critical. Uh, streaming data is is critical. This is where this Ionic net is, uh, let's say, is, is uh, superior over other networks. It could be Google Assistant and Alexa in the car yes, too, right? Yes, exactly. They can be connected with that. Right. And, uh, yeah, it. yeah. And then uh, just this demo there. So we're not, uh, okay. we're not filming showing this one. Okay. Uh, okay. But how about that one over there? Can we can, can we, we get can, the can go back. Sure. Let's get this one. Yeah. Uh, so this is how you make sure that the cars don't get hacked. This is our secure. Is our, uh, an example of our uh, security application. Yeah? This is a CAN network, and messages are being, let's say, sent around between the nodes. Yeah. These are the three nodes. Uh, but imagine someone is, let's say, hacking uh, this the system, for example, through uh, coming in through your telematic units yeah. and, and changing, basically. 
the data that are communicated between the, the nodes. Yeah? So your speed could be shown wrongly or uh, let's say uh, the RPM could uh, could show on, but the, you actually could, could uh, let's say stop the motor uh, from external and and with uh, let's say authenticated messages that can be prevented and we have the solution that authenticate that, uh, can because yeah. can is kind of like an unencrypted open networking exactly, thing exactly yeah. it's very easy to messages hack right are now. messages are not encrypted first of all yeah but you can encrypt them with uh, with this technology.